Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the Edge Church. We're so excited that we get to share today's worship and message with you all while you're at home during this period of the coronavirus and social distancing. Uh, just do keep in mind that during this period of social distancing, we obviously have a lot fewer people and a lot less traffic that are able to gather with us today. So if you want to keep this message going, feel free to help us out and support our church by using that donate button or visit edgechurchnc.net slash donate for learning one of the many ways that you can help us continue what we're doing. We're excited to have you here. Please enjoy today's message, and we can't wait to have you again next week. All right, good morning, everyone. So glad that everyone could either join us in person or online or record it afterwards. But uh, we're very glad to see you here. Um, if you are with us in person, we are in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina, currently um, renting and using this space at um, the CrossFit gym of all places. So again, I mentioned this last time, you can no longer say that you haven't been to a CrossFit gym. So, but we do a uh, big shout out to them for um, sharing this space and allowing us to use this in these times of um, crisis. So um, God's blessing everywhere. This church has a long history of worshiping wherever God has led us to, and this is currently our, our current location. So, and, we, and you do not have to do burpees or pull-ups when you come, so just please. But anyway, so uh, second Sunday of Advent this morning, again, welcome. All precautions are here if you're in in person, um, whatever you're comfortable doing, masks, there's hand sanitizers, the bathrooms are in the back. There is a child supervision room here as well. Um, so if you have young children at home, please bring them. We would love to love on your children um, at, when you join us um, in the future. So again, welcome. Um, so with that, we're going to have a word of prayer and get ready to praise God this morning. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for this season as we have entered into Advent, that this is the time of year that we can reflect. Give us time to not be stressed about all of the stuff that we as humans have piled on to this holiday season. Father God, may we find comfort and stillness to remember that it's the importance of sending Jesus to earth that you sent Jesus as an example that we can live here on earth so that we can have a relationship with you, Father. That we are not perfect. It is a fallen world. First, you gave humans choice. We had a tough one with that one, didn't choose very well, so we are fallen, and the second thing you sent us was Jesus so that we could make a choice to live with the Holy Spirit in wisdom and truth. So be with us in this service with your message as the Edge Church can just worship you and love on each other. We thank you for this opportunity. Be with the music and the message, the people here, the people there, because your message can reach anywhere, Father God, anywhere. So we are here to praise you, Jesus. Amen. Knees again, God, I'm begging, please again. I need. 
need you. Oh, I need you. Walking down the dead roads, water for my thirsty soul. I need you. Oh, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy water on my skin. Dead man walking, slave to sin. I want to know about being born again. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. So take me to the riverside. Take me under baptize. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet. So good to see you. We celebrate here when we don't when we have, when we see people we haven't seen in a while. So we apologize for that. Yep. Sorry about technical difficulties. Yeah, it's you, sir. It definitely is. Definitely is. Our list so long even in this strange mess where we live these days. And we want to do it right. We want to be safe, but we want to be able to enjoy this season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare for the company that will come. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there's work to be done Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found.
but then we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith that the God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for that God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith that company is coming. I'll come, I'll come, Emmanuel. Thank you. And for those of you who are new to the Edge Church, we um, don't do many things that are too traditional. Um, so yes, we have twist um, can battery lit candles. <laughs> they didn't trust me with flame. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, the next song is Joy to the World. <laughs> Name of all, 
Please have a seat. Is there a transition video? To morning, Edge Church. Morning. Hey, I'm coming in loud and clear, thanks to my friends over here. Thank you. I'm John, um, John Strother. I, I have this role in, uh, in our United Methodist family called District Superintendent. You remember Linda Taylor? She served in that role for eight years, and, and now uh, since July, that's, that's my role. And so I roam about uh, Eastern North Carolina, trying not to cause too much trouble. But uh, it's so good to be here. I was a church planner. Believe it or not, as old as I am, I was <clears throat> 20 years ago, and, um, and uh, that aged me an extra 20 years probably, but it is just so good to be with you guys. If you got a Bible on your phone or, or tablet or whatever, you might want to turn to, with me to um, Matthew 24. Uh, I'm going to begin with the 37th verse today. I think it's around 37. Matthew 24, uh, beginning with verse 37, and I'm just honored to be with you. Thank God for this church. And the, and the people that uh, you touch both here in this wonderful place and, and all over the world. So hear this word from, from uh, the living God in Jesus Christ. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and, and drinking and, and marrying and, and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away that's how it will be Jesus says that's how it will be at the coming of the son of man two men will be in the field one will be taken the other left two women will be grinding 
with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you don't know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known what time of night that the thief was coming, well, he would have kept watch. He wouldn't have let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready because the Son of Man comes at an hour when you do not expect him. I guess it was about the time this church was getting started, being birthed, that uh, I remember this onslaught of commercials on television. CPI security, <laughs> identify yourself. You remember those lame commercials? I mean, you'd have some NFL linebacker breaking into a house and this little dainty woman would go, CPI security, identify yourself. And, the, and he would drop everything and run out the door, right? Like, that's real. Um, well, on this second Sunday in Advent, um, we hear Jesus say, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came. Whew, man, that sounds like the start of a great novel, doesn't it? They knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. Picture with me just a minute. March 11th, um, 2011. In a place called Shintona, Japan. Shop owner by the name of Harumi. She's, she's native. She's felt this stuff before. Some of you maybe have been stationed there. You felt it too, or you've been in California. She felt it, but she, she knew what she was feeling. It wasn't just the average kind of quake. She grabbed her purse, keys, locked her shop up, dashed to the car, and drove as fast as she could to her mom and dad's house. But they were much, much older, feeble. She, um, she didn't have time to get them back to the car to drive away. So they just stood in the living room, she said, held hands as tight as they could. And then the wave hit, the tsunami that had followed the quake. And she said her parents were just too old and too feeble and too weak to hold on for very long. And before she knew it, their hands were gone from hers. And she was trapped up beneath the ceiling, if you could imagine, being six inches below this ceiling on top of some furniture, trying to find a place to breathe. And then the level went down. But her mom and dad were dead. Same town. Shintona. 60-year-old guy named... We'll just call him Hero. He sees it coming. <laughs> he, he, he runs into his house. Think about it. If you see it coming, you think, what's the stuff you're going to take with you? What are you going to grab to take with you? He goes in and starts trying to pile that stuff into something, but, but it's to no avail. His wife's trying to do the same thing. Next thing he knows, he's floating on the roof of his house where he stays for the next two days. They find him 10 miles off the shoreline. None of the helicopters or, or search boats had seen him. Two days later, they find him on the roof of the house. They pull him onto the ship. He just breaks into tears. Did, did you just see this dude in Florida do the same thing? Except he was 80 miles from shore. And they never found his wife. I mean, this is the time of the year where we do like to sing stuff like Joy to the World. I like that. Uh, we, we might even sing some versions of other stuff, you know, that stuff in minor keys, like Come Thou Long Expected Jesus or O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. But for some people, those, those words of those songs are not just some sentimental thing to sing in December. For some people in the world today, those, the words of those songs are or a plea for help. Oh, come. Come. Understand this, Matthew tells us. Understand this. If, if the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch, right? Wouldn't we all? He would have kept watch. And he wouldn't have let his house be broken into. I, I love the way Barbara Brown Taylor frames this for us. I mean, you know, if, if, 
if I were God, I, I'd do it a different way, okay? I, I mean, I would. I, I, I would send everybody, you know, a, a registered letter, right? And, you know, rather than this just, you know, popping in like a thief, I would, I'd send a registered letter. I, I love the way she phrases it. She says, you know, think about it. Think about opening up a, a letter, registered letter, and you read these lines. Next Thursday at 6, the kingdom will come. All will be revealed. You may let go of your carefully guarded stuff, your, your carefully guarded self, your, your carefully guarded list of things to do. Next Thursday at 6, none of that will matter anymore. Everything good will be changed into light. Everything else into fire. P.S. Jesus will pick you up at five. I mean, that's how you do it, right? That's how you do a second coming. Be my luck, the registered mail would come the day after, right? Well, it was, it was 40 years after Jesus had been crucified and left in a hole in the ground and ascended into heaven. <laughs> 40 years when Matthew writes his story of Jesus. You know Matthew had another name, right? You remember? I mean, he was on the inside. His name was Levi. He was a tax collector. Forty years later, <laughs> he writes the story of Jesus. He, he writes the story because he's trying to explain to some people in the first century where Jesus is. I mean, didn't he say, I go to prepare a place for you and I'll come again? Receive you unto myself? I mean, he said that. Where is he? I mean, was this just some master plan, you know, where he's hiding in the corner? Or was he MIA? I mean, people wanted to know. I mean, was, was Jesus going to come and rescue everybody from the, from the cliff face of the abyss? Or were we just supposed to hold on white-knuckled until our strength gives out and we just fall back into the pit? But what's going to happen? It was to these first century followers that Matthew recalled the words of Jesus. For in the days before the flood, Jesus said, the people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away so you also must be ready. Because the Son of Man, Son of Man, He'll come at an hour when you don't expect Him. I mean, I don't know about you folks this morning, but when I, when I hear these words, when I read this text over and over this week, that the things that kept jumping off the page for me were things like this. They knew nothing about what would happen. Until the flood came. I mean, if they'd have just had, you know, CNN or Fox, they would have known what was happening, right? They'd have had that reporter right there with the microphone. The, the words, you must be ready. The words, the Son of Man will come. The words, an hour when you do not expect. You ever had anybody pop in on you when you didn't expect it? <laughs> It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> well, what I want to know is this today. Why in the heck did Saul invite me to come down here from Greenville in the middle of Christmas to read this stuff and talk about this stuff? I mean, this is not going in a, in a Christmas card at Hallmark, folks. I mean, does Matthew really realize? Does, he, does Matthew not get it that there are only 18 shopping days left till Christmas and that includes what's left of this day? 18, folks. There's eating, right? There's drinking to do. There, there's, there's festivities and weddings to celebrate. There's poinsettias to arrange for some. There's work unfinished, right? I mean, there's tinsel to put up. I mean, Lord have mercy. My wife and I were putting up Christmas trees yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Crashes to be arranged. Long lists of Christmas to-dos. 
Anybody relate to that? Then hear me. It's into that world that he comes. It's into that world that the thief comes. It's into this world that the beloved thief comes, unbending, relentless, and coming. But why? Why not, why not the Barbara Brown Taylor method? I remember hearing Ben Zander. He's a Brit who lives up in Boston. He, he directs uh, the Boston Pops Orchestra. Um, telling this story about growing up in London with his family. And his dad was a fairly successful businessman. He said he, when he was eight or nine years old, he remembered his dad one day primping himself in the mirror early one morning, you know, getting all the buttons on his vest buttoned in his three-piece suit. And so he did what most eight or nine-year-old boys would do. Where, where are you going, Dad? <laughs> I, I'm, I have business with a man in Glasgow today. Well, you know, London to Glasgow, that's a pretty good little skip on the train, right? <laughs> Glasgow. His dad's out the door. Then, then he begins to plead with his mom, wh wh where's dad? Dad's going to see a man in Glasgow. Is he a friend of dad's? No, they're, they're just they're recent acquaintances. They have some business to deal with. So his dad goes, has breakfast uh, the next morning with uh, this guy in, in Scotland and then back on the train to London. And when he gets home, his son's waiting. Dad, couldn't you just, you know how the Brits like to say it, couldn't you have just rung him up? <laughs> um, and he said that's when his dad sort of, his eyes got big, his eyebrows went up, and he pointed a finger at this nine-year-old boy and said, son, there's some things in life that are best done in person. <sighs> the Son of Man comes. He comes because... Here's the, here's the truth. Here's the gospel today. Why does he come? This beloved thief? I'll tell you why. Because he knows how badly our lives need breaking into. Right? Right? I mean, he knows. He knows what a mess we are. He knows how screwed up our priorities are. He knows how, how we're prone to look in the wrong places. How we... How we're looking for the Messiah in all the wrong places. And so he comes. He comes and finds us in the ruts that we're living in. And every one of us has some, right? You know what a rut is? A rut is a grave with the ends knocked out. That's all it is. He comes where we are. He doesn't wait for us to get ready. The good news is he comes and finds us in the rut. And he reaches out to us. He extends a hand to us. Let's be friends. Come, follow me. The way that most of us live our lives, if we're honest, we live our lives and we say, I, I believe he's coming. I don't think he's coming this year, but I, you know, I think he's coming, right? Maybe it, he'll come in five years. I'll have the house paid off. The kids will be in college. Then he'll come, because that'll work great for us. It's that kind of, you know, out of sight, out of mind thing. It, it, it's kind of like, uh, or some of you old enough to remember what I do, you know, the teacher saying to you in the class, now class, I've got to go down to the principal's office for just a minute to get a three-pronged adapter for the video projector, so I want you just to sit here. Miss Jones is across the hallway, she's listening, but I just want you to sit here and I want you to behave yourselves. Anybody else smell what's coming next? I mean, come on. It's not going to work, is it? Do I, do I really need to finish the story? Well, we know where that thing is going. I know where, I mean, I spent my seventh grade year in the principal's office. Well, folks, Matthew's listeners were asked to wait too. Jesus came, Jesus left, and they waited. And while he was gone, there was trouble. I 
I guess it was 10 years ago, on a Friday night, I left my home in North Raleigh with my oldest daughter, Erica, and my youngest daughter, Caitlin, seated on the couch in, in the family room of that house. That house had a, a long hallway that led from the front door back to the family room, and the family room turned into a kitchen. It was the whole width of the house. So that's where everybody gathered. But left on this Friday night, probably to go to a Christmas party, um, and my girls didn't turn any lights on. Not only that, they didn't lock the front door. <laughs> so when we came home later that night, oh my gosh, my, my youngest, Caitlin, who's pretty excitable anyway, she starts, Dad, Dad, and tells me what happened. After, after we left, they're sitting there on the couch watching TV, and, and one of my girls thought they heard something. Then they knew they heard something. They heard the front door of the house open, and they about, well, you know what they about did. Um, and then my, my youngest, who's always been a parrot, I mean, she could just, when she was three years old, she could just spit out commercials on television, you know, verbatim. <laughs> she kicked in, and she goes, who are you, and what are you doing in my house? <laughs> in her biggest voice, she could muster. And that's when my oldest daughter said they heard the sound of a lady sobbing. They could see her shadow. They could see her silhouette. They carefully got up holding each other's hands and walked up the hallway, clipped on the first light they could find. And there's this old lady bundled up in her coat, sobbing. She lost. My oldest had the presence of mind to, to go grab the, the neighborhood directory out of the cabinet in the kitchen. And they began to ask her questions. And she could at least remember her last name. And after a half hour or so of calming this lady down, they called this number, and the man who answered was frantic. It was her husband. She had Alzheimer's, and she had just wandered away from the house without his knowledge, and she thought she was coming home. Mm. Jesus ascends into heaven and leaves us in between the advents. You thought about it that way? We're in between. The advent of his coming to Bethlehem and the return of the beloved thief. Certain things in life are meant to be done in person. And Jesus says, I am coming. Watch. Pay attention. Be ready. Although we all know the truth, we won't be. The beloved thief. Comes. And that's our only hope this Christmas. I'm wondering if there are ways that you would want to name aloud today. First, where you see God's fingerprints in the world today, in this community. Places, you know, God, God loves to leave fingerprints all over the furniture of our lives, just enough, you know, so that we can. We can see where God's been at work. But where have you seen God's fingerprints, either in your life, your neighbor's lives, your co-workers' lives, your classmates' lives, your family, that you could just name, popcorn it up? Where have you seen God's fingerprints lately? My career. In your career as a dietitian. When Eddie came in this morning. Ah, fingerprints, Eddie. God's fingerprints. Come on. In friends. I mean, folks, when he says watch, he means pay attention. Look where the fingerprints are. That ought to tell you something, right? Where else? Where else have you seen his fingerprints? Children. Our children. 
I got one today in Lawrence, Kansas with COVID. Her name's Rachel. She was the one not in the story. She wants to get married in May. I'm going to remember her today. Are there others you'd name out loud today that you, or situations, just name them? We could pray about. Who? Uh, this family that lost their daughter, and she was 42 years old. Say that again. Your brother. Just lost your brother. Oh, my. Hmm. Mm. Mercy. Are there others? Mm. Well, good news, folks, is <laughs> the beloved thief knows this. I mean, we're not here by accident this morning. He may be breaking into your heart right now. <laughs> Pray with me. Lord Jesus, in this day and time when we remember your unexpected coming in Bethlehem, born to blue-collar folk in a one-horse town on the edge of the universe, you came. You came just for sheer love. And today you've heard the spoken and unspoken ways that we have witnessed you at work in this world even today, long after people had left you in the ground for dead, still at work. Lord, we only pray today that, that you might continue the, that same work in us, that you might continue to raise us from death to life. Noel. For families that have lost loved ones, we pray for strength. For our frontline healthcare workers who are at the end of their rope and weary, Lord, be their strength. For our families, this family, may you grant new vision. May your Holy Spirit just fall upon us in ways that transform us into people who look just like Jesus. Not just in our words, but in our actions. And may you grant us, Lord, the confidence that we can leave the door open to you today. That you can come in to us No ear may hear your coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive you, we know, O oh Christ, that you will enter in. And for this, we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. gave a sign bow to babe on bending knee the savior of humanity unto us a child is born he shall Son of God and Son.
Thank you so much for this word. Can you bless us? Yes, for the Lord. Swing your hands up like a funnel, as weird as that may feel today. Just make yourself a funnel. <laughs> God, you, uh, you pour love into this world through Jesus and into us. But now, Lord, we pray that uh, the love that's been poured into us, the grace undeserved, the forgiveness that we, we could not create for ourselves would be so full in us that it would spill out of us by intention into the lives of all those around us. May we be your vessels of grace, not just today, but every day, until you come again. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for the ones Glad listening you were able online. To be with us this week. Blessings. We really hope you enjoyed the message here at the Edge. If you've subscribed, do anything you can to help share the word. Tell your friends about us. That's going to help us get the word out there to everybody. If you want to help us financially continue this message, feel free and visit us at edgechurchnc.net slash donate. And then you can even use that donate button on Facebook. But in the meantime, we hope to see you again next week. Enjoy your week. Church starts now. I love Mary Gibson. <laughs>